Welcome to our Sound for Video session. Today is the 12th of May, 2018. Question and answer session. First question, what's your workflow for 96 kilohertz recordings when you want to use them for special effects? How do you change the sample rate and pitch? Do you change it only by stretching it by 100%? How to change it by a different factor? I would like to digitize the old recording, which was recorded a long time ago on the broken tape recorder. The recorder was running too fast, and the recording now is slowed down when it is played on the tape player, which works properly. I would like to match the original tempo and pitch. First, I would like to digitize it at the higher sample rate for better quality. Um, these are questions, to be honest, I've never done any sort of old recording restoration. So I am not an expert in this area, but let me tell you what I do know. And um, hopefully this is helpful for you here in Adobe Audition. Under effects and time and pitch, there's a stretch and pitch uh, option that I think may be useful for you. Here what you can do is you can set the, it says the current duration, you can change that duration. So you're going to want to speed it up. And there are some advanced uh, settings down here as well. So you have a variety of different things to do. I would go with the defaults for speed up and tweak this new duration here. That would be the first step that I would take. And this should, you can also say lock the stretch and pitch. Resample, this is, again, I'm, I'm not an expert on this. This is the tool I would use to start working with that. So hopefully that's helpful. Then in terms of uh, changing the sample rate, what I would do is when you go to save the file and choose save as, right here on the sample type, it gives you this option here. I would change the sample rate to whatever you need it to be in the end. And then you also have some advanced settings here. Um, what you can do, say for example here, if I'm going to 44.1, I can change the quality. I think the quality setting really just means it will take more time. And if high quality audio is what you're looking for, I just crank that up to 100%. And then you, when you save it, it will go ahead and uh, change the sample rate for you. It'll do the resampling. Now, there are other people that get very picky about resampling like that and probably know a whole lot more about it than I do. It is the algorithm that can make a difference. The old school resampling algorithms had issues. They were not very kind to the audio and you could actually hear some artifacts. And essentially what they would do is just drop a bunch of samples and draw a straight line between the, new, the two uh, remaining closest samples. So um, this should have a much more sophisticated algorithm than that. Some people buy special software for that. Um, I think Adobe Audition will do a pretty nice job. So hopefully that will help you and uh, get that recording restored. Good luck with that. All right, next up, we have a question from Dwayne. I have a Zoom F4 and the demo on headphone and output routing for the Zoom F8 was perfect and really helped me understand. That's great. Thanks, Dwayne. Can you talk about polywaves some more? Yes, I can. Let's just show you one here. I don't know exactly what you want to know about them, but let me just show you one here really quickly. The way this works is this is a file that was recorded on the Zoom F4. And the first two tracks here, this is the left stereo mix track, and this is the right stereo mix track. Then below that, we have microphone input number one, isolated channel. That is just this microphone. We have uh, the next one, which is microphone input channel number two, which is just that microphone. Again, an isolated channel. And then the same thing here for the third microphone. So this is three microphones being recorded. Um, you can see it's sort of a panel discussion where person one talks, then person two, then person three. And you'll notice on the mix track, it picks all of it up. So what this uh, this recording was a very simple one. In this case, the fader for each of these isolated channels was set to zero dB. So whatever came in on this microphone channel, where, you know, however the gain was set, was sent directly and identically to the mix channel. Additionally, I didn't pan any of these microphones to the left or right. So in the mix channels, you get the exact same amount of microphone one on the left channel as on the right channel, and the same with microphones two and three. So. That's the basic idea with uh, polywave files. It is just, from my point of view, of kind of a convenient way to record lots of different microphones, put it all in one file for one take. And then when you get into post, you can start to do some other things with it. So um, let me just show you kind of what you might do here once you get into a multi-track setting here. So I just clicked on multi-track and you'll see here there's a little drop down next to this uh, poly file here. And now what I can do is I can actually drag out the individual channels within that file and put them on different uh, tracks here if I wanted to do that. Or if I knew I wanted all of them, I, on the Mac I can hold down Option. I think it's probably, I don't know which button it is on a PC, I apologize. Um, but I hold that button down and drag it out and you can see it brings all five of them out 
and puts them on their own individual channels. If you don't hold down that button, in this case again, option on the Mac, maybe it's a maybe it's Alt on PC, and then um, if I do that, it puts them all in a single track. So any operation I do will apply to all five of the channels. So probably not what you want. So again, that's holding down the Option key, drag it out, and that puts all of them out there on their own separate track. Um, some other things you can do in the waveform view, if you just needed to get rid of some of them, what you could do, if we uh, bring that back up, we can right click and choose extract channels to mono files. What will happen here is it will break each of them into its own little file. So whoops, let me get to show you. So here's isolated channel three input, isolated channel two, isolated channel one, stereo mix right, stereo mix left, and the left and right are identical again in this case. So um, if you don't have Audition and you need a way to split those up, there is a an application over on the Sound Devices website called Wave Agent. I know a lot of people have talked about this. So for example, one application that does not read poly files with more than two channels is Isotope RX. So you might, in that case, need <laughs> uh, an application that can split things apart. So here it is. It's called, again, Wave Agent. It's, uh, I believe, a free download here from Sound Devices. I'll go ahead and put the link for this on the support page at Sound Devices in the description below. So that is a discussion of PolyWave files. I hope that was what you were talking about, Dwayne. Let's take a look at your other questions here. Uh, and also about the two main outputs on the Zoom F4 being unbalanced. Well, uh, the two main outputs on the F4 are these two XLR-based outputs right here. These are actually balanced. They are not unbalanced. So. Uh, I don't know if you already understand the difference between balanced versus unbalanced. It sounds like maybe you do. Not positive. But let me just uh, open up this website here. There is... I'll put a link to this down below as well. This gives a more in-depth description of the differences between balanced and unbalanced. The practical uh, difference between the two is that unbalanced audio cables and connections, interconnects as they call them, you can't run the cable as far until you start picking, or are very likely to start picking up degradation in the audio signal and interference. Balanced cables, on the other hand, you can run much farther, so it's not um, out of the question to run a balanced cable 50 feet long, um, or even longer than that. So that's the main difference between them. Balanced connect connections will typically either be on XLR, like this, or they will be on a quarter inch TRS, which looks like this. You'll notice there are two rings on here. In this case, they're white rings. Um, a lot of times they're black, but so this is tip ring sleeve. And these can also be used as balanced or they can be used as unbalanced stereo. So either way. Um, so that's why these are a little trickier. You can't always tell what the interconnect is if, you, if this is all the information you have. But um, so those XLR outputs are balanced and you can run relatively long cables. Um, in addition to that, on the Zoom F4, there is a sub out, which is this little 3.5 millimeter output jack right here. That is unbalanced, and that is actually designed to send the audio from the Zoom F4 to a camera that has a 3.5 millimeter stereo input. So um, that's usually going to be a microphone level input. Now, if you do that, uh, you do have to change one of the settings. If you look at page 95 in the manual here, it tells you how to change the output level. If you're going into a DSLR or mirrorless camera or video camera that has a 3.5 millimeter input, most likely you're going to want to change the output level to mic level. Uh, you can see that again on page 95 in the user manual. So hopefully that helps, Dwayne. Uh, last question, also, do you think Zoom will be coming out with a Zoom F4n? I think the answer to that is most likely yes. I don't have any sort of inside information. They just announced their Zoom F8n, of course, which I think is what prompted the question here. I don't know what features will be in it. I don't know what the timing will be. <laughs> Interestingly, if I can say this uh, about the F4, the F4 actually had some features that the F8 didn't have. It had these kind of function buttons at the, at the top, which made getting around uh, a little bit easier. It also, via its um, USB output here, or it's actually a USB input output, you could power the F control if you were to use the, uh, the F control mixing surface, the, the one with the linear faders. Uh, the F8 couldn't do that. I, I hope that the F8N can do that. That would be a very nice addition. Um, and if you have, if you guys have not heard about the F8N announcement, I do have a piece where I talked to Samuel from Zoom at NAB this year. And uh, you can go check that out on my main channel. So 
for those that are interested in that. All right. That is all the questions for this week. I hope all of you are getting out and making some great sound. We'll talk to you again next week. Mm -hmm.